what I found. Okay. Otherwise, it's a condo. And... All right. Welcome back, everyone. I am the Dungeon Master. This is the Adventurer's Guide to Inns and Taverns. And tonight we are rejoining the party as they are still along the riverside. They have taken a barge with Jackaro and her mate, Darcia. They have a large barge made of ra um, logs tied together like a raft and a tent and sail set up on it. Um, they kind of half pole half row and half sail and yes that is a hundred and fifty percent down the down the river um taking people from water ran down to el cadra and as you guys travel along um jackaro regales you with tales of el cadra and the, um, let's call it vibrant nightlife and a abundant black market scene where you can get all kinds of so-called magical items and see so-called magic being performed. Um, now, of course, you know, Delos uh, would probably, you know, be interested in knowing whether or not this is actual magic um but he's probably also heard tales of charlatans who go around pretending to be able to do magic to fool the simple you know border folk around here like all of these borderlings here they're um uh how how do i put this correctly um they're like floridians yeah <laughs> like like ouch no 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 barry uh <laughs> if you're if you're speaking we are not hearing you uh yeah uh <laughs> you know they they are um you know not not the brightest, you know, definitely have not invested heavily in uh, infrastructure or uh, education or, uh, you know, anything really. And uh, so, they're, so they're from Philadelphia and they're a bartender in, a, in like an oyster shack in Waterdale. So, oh no 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 yeah. the, the the philadelphians would probably be uh like uh the the eglians they 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 kind of have a uh snooty like hey we're better than everybody kind of you know attitude and uh yeah so um you know philadelphia is probably closer to eglia the uh the uh <laughs> borderlings here here on the border kingdoms they're they're just you know they're a real simple you know medieval peasant folk kind of kind of people you know they're they're not as sophisticated as the more romanesque caldonians um they're they're not as uh religious as the uh the uh new eglians they're they're not um military like like the carpathians they're they're not the noble knights that the that the bretonians are you know they're they're just they're just like poor uh central european you know like far eastern france kind of kind of peasants just living right along the border of like wars and monsters and you know just all kinds of like bad stuff goes on at the borders and that's why these people have settled here uh you know it's missouri you know uh you, you these are the descendants of people who were too lazy to continue making the trip to california okay well, we're good you guys hear me yeah 
so so you know here in in uh the border kingdoms there's a whole lot of like um crime and and just really lax uh governing uh especially because each of the cities kind of has to self-govern because the border kingdoms are very far spread and as i said the roadways are all but non-existent or so bandit filled to the point of like you know you might you might as well walk straight down uh you know um I don't know, pick a bad street in New Orleans or Detroit or whatever, you know, and, and with, you know, money just flashing around everywhere, you know, it's, it's one of those things where, where you w won't get very far trying to take the roads. And so these girls have made a very fine living taking people down here and they're telling you all about El Cadre because like, once they get there, they stay there for a few days because there's just money to be made and money to be lost and, you know, other extracurricular activities to engage in. And uh, so they're really excited to get there. But, you know, obviously old Grumpy, the giant snapping turtle blocking the way last night, there was nothing to be done about it. You know, so you guys have been here all night. I went ahead and gave you the long rest, so everybody's at full hit, full hit points. You've got all of your spell slots and any other resources. Uh, Jeremiah actually uh, stuck around. He needed to heal up after getting singed a bit by the uh, by the fire wasps as well. So um, you guys uh, wake up to find him just kind of sitting in the riverbank but still within the party's radius here and uh you wake up to find jackaro already fishing off of the edge of the raft that has been secured to the shore here so she's just kind of dangling her toes in the water and casting her line in and over and over again she she's trying to catch this trout over here that uh this little slippery bastard keeps uh, jumping out of the water and going after some of the morning uh, mayflies and, and other, uh, you know, insects that are just kind of hovering around the water in the early morning before it gets too too hot. And, uh, and uh, she keeps casting her line over there trying to get them, you know, fly fishing for them. But uh, she, she's just not having any luck. Let's go. This is Barry. It's your opportunity, Barry. To do what? Isn't that the one you have a crush on? Uh, I haven't been. I haven't joined you guys in like a month, so I don't know what I've done. So might want to check. Happen. Might want to check your notes. <laughs> yeah, I can't even get to my. Know. I can't even get to my character. <laughs> I, even if you haven't been on in a month, VDs. Fairy boat captain in love with Jackaro, fairy boat captain woman. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say I'm pretty sure you've you've been uh, secured in a marriage pact uh, in your absence. Is, he a dwarf? Is that what you guys did to me, you son of bitches? Barry, you uh, don't worry. You got your AIDS test. You passed. You got a 65. Uh, you're not gay yet. But it's good. Time. Great. Outstanding. You're safe. So, uh, as as uh, Jeremiah hangs out and you know, kind of croaks as as he sees you guys start to start to uh, stir. Um, he he croaks in delight to see his his uh, friend back awake and. You guys see Jackaro fishing. Darcy is still sleeping. And yeah, what do you do? Jackaro a dwarf? Jackaro is not a dwarf, but she does carry a uh, half keg of strong liquor on her back at all times. Well, count me in. <laughs> see? 
So tell me how I get my my like spell stuff at the top of the page again. Okay. So if you click on your character, you'll see uh, a row of macros at the top. And I went ahead and uh, added all of the ones that like would require you to target somebody and all the rest would be like, um, you know, like just buff spells that you cast on yourself or whatever that you can just go to your page and click on them. But like, let's say you wanted to cast Cure Wounds, you go over to the Cure Wounds on the second row there and click on it and it'll ask you to select a target and then you click on them and it'll put all the information up on the chat bar for us. literally don't remember how to it used to be stuff at the top that i would click on initiative or roll or spells it's not yeah. there i can click on myself and get my big character sheet up and look at it all but yeah that's that's, that's under there? that's under journal you have to click on your token so on the map minimize your sheet and then on the map oh, oh there it is thank you thank you sorry yeah no in. it's okay no 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 not at all in like four weeks yeah no it's all good Okay. And it, it usually takes a couple sessions to really get used to it. And then, you know, you only had one or two sessions and then you had off for a while. So, yeah, you know, it's all good. So, yeah, you, you see this little trout bastard jumping around here and there, but uh, n nothing, okay. nothing doing so far. I'll, I'll approach the captain and, uh, and ask her, uh, what's the deal with the fish? You, you can't catch this thing? How long have you been at it? And uh, when we plan to leave. Oh, you know, I've been fishing this river uh, now a uh, decade and a half. And uh, I, I, always, I always get the fish, but this one he don't want to bite. Well, there's always next trip. Uh, we got but... to eat breakfast, boy. Can... Yeah, boy. Like eat one of these eighty-five dead wasps or something. A little spicy. Yeah, dead, uh, dead wasp uh, meal and uh, with some algae. Cha, you, you Westerners and your weird uh, appetites. You don't know nothing about no gumbo. And the starving children in Al Kadim that would cut off their arm for this wasp fucking buffet. I told you, boy, that's how Kadra. Who's Darcia? Oh, Darcia, you still asleep in there, girl? Get your ass up! And Darcia kind of like starts grumbling. She starts grumbling and everything. She's, uh, as far as you guys know, the, the first mate. Um, basically she's the one who takes your money, does the bookkeeping and accounting for who owes what and, and all of that. And, uh, kind of also then does co-captaining, co-piloting duties when Jackaro starts to get a little drunk and, uh, her steering is leaving something to be desired. Well, don't we have some rations? <sighs> in our backpacks that we can access. Oh boy, ain't nothing better than fresh fish off the fire. So well, you who's don't gonna... No, we're not catching it. Uh, the pools are right in the back of the tent there. Grab one and see what you can do, boy. Okay, well I'm gonna take a pole and I'm gonna by God. Same. Awesome. Let's get this done. Same. All right. So uh, you find there are three additional fishing poles in the back of the tent. That means three of you can attempt to help her catch this trout. It is a survival check. Okay. Alrighty. Survival All right. check. Where's that thing? Skills. Oh! 
Okay. Well, I'm plus four. Let me let me do it. Let me do it. I'm plus four on that. I am zero. Del Delos, you you pick up a fishing pole, pretty much for the first time in your life, having you know trained as a wizard and everything. You're you're much more used to uh, having ready access to to all kinds of food and and all of that. And it's only since you've you know been an adventurer and traveling that you've had to do any of this kind of stuff. And so as as you go to uh, cast the line into the water, you kind of throw the fishing pole in. And she looks at you and she goes, three copper. Sure, I'll take that. Thanks. No, that's how much coming out of your refund. And... Uh, uh, hey, we have to eat. This is the sacrifice. We yeah, you just sacrificed my fishing pole. I'll make you another one. Yeah, you better. And then, uh, so, um, a a Avalius, I want you to go ahead and roll an attack on the trout, um, a ranged attack. And you watch as the pole just floats down the river rapidly on the on the uh, uh, um, flowing water. It's just like gone. Uh, all right. So, Abilius, as you ready your crossbow and, and take careful aim at the trout as he jumps, you do, in fact, manage to nail him right as Hamish is casting out. But Hamish... You were anticipating uh, the trout to to be where he was and not where he was jumping to. So Abilius manages to shoot the trout and he is now on your line. However, as the trout jumps, suddenly uh, uh, Hamish, your line, your... Um, hook gets like sucked in and you can feel the tip of your pole bend and you make a strength saving throw okay let's do that you let it go that under, is that under my skills three copper uh yeah it's right underneath uh your skills so on your skills page and then scroll down and then okay. you'll see yep under strength strength check yep Oh no no no! I'm sorry. Uh, strength save. You you actually get a saving throw for this. So just on your core stats page. Yeah, I'm sorry. This isn't a, a skill check or something. This is essentially a trap. It's not really a trap, but you know, functions essentially like a trap. All right. It's a trap. So uh, you just manage to brace yourself right at the river's edge. Your your feet are literally in the muck and mud and like slightly underwater, but you're mostly uh, still on the shore. So you're not in the water, but the pole is threatening to break. What do you do? I to reel it in. All right. So uh, there, there we're going to use your uh, unskilled strength check, and we're going to let you just use the one that you had. You don't reel it in, but you manage to heave with all of your dwarven muscles. And as you pull as hard as you can to get the uh, fish to the shore, you can see just the very, very uh, tip of it start to surface, you see a very, very large shadow start to um, surface. And, and as the shadow starts to, starts to surface, you see what looks like whiskers, little tentacles but much larger than one you've ever seen before kind of 
going off to the side, three or four on each side, and a massive, broad head. This, this is unmistakably a giant catfish, but one much larger than anything you've ever seen in your life. And it is struggling with all of its might. Better go over here and grab me, Korg, before I get pulled in. You hear that, Korg? Hamish wants you to grab him. I'm grabbing. <laughs> I'm grabbing. Zootalurs! It's a trap. <laughs> it's a trap. Uh, so, uh... No, it's not a trap. It's uh, just Le Paso. Uh... So, um, Korg, you are going to be aiding Hamish. So, Korg, I want you to roll an unskilled strength check under your under your skills to see if you can get above a 12. If you can get above a 12, then Hamish gets advantage on his, um, yeah, there you go. That, that, that'll work. It was a strength saving throw, but it's it's going to be high enough just with your roll. So, uh, Hamish, you may roll your unskilled strength check with advantage. So is this the one where I do uh, regular strength on the skill, the core stats or the skill? This is skills. I need to roll with advantage. Advantage. All right. So you manage to hang on and pull the catfish five feet closer to shore. Okay. I I, I should roll for the catfish. I'm going to roll for the catfish. I was just gonna. Nah. I was just gonna set a difficulty class, but I, uh, I've changed my mind. I'm gonna. I'm gonna roll for the catfish. We're eating this bitch now. Holy shit! All right. So nope, you fail, and the catfish pulls you five feet into the water. You are now chest deep in the water. Korg, your feet are in the water. Alright, so let's kill this motherfucker. Let me zap this thing with a magic missile or something. Oh, yeah. Uh, we can roll right. initiative. I... We, we can roll initiative now. Okay, because I was going to say, I could also try and shoot the line or something. Yeah, yeah. Now, now that I realize you guys are probably going to want to help, uh, I figure it might be best to go ahead and roll initiative. Okay, well, let's just... <laughs> A couple of you are rolling crits on initiative? Okay. I'll take crit. It means you get an extra standard action. All right, has everybody rolled now? I think so. I just had to double check. All right. Yeah. So, Abilius, not only do you go first, but you get two standard actions. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm going to shoot this sucker. And if that's enough action to uh, shoot again. I will do so. Uh, it is because um, your hand crossbow uh, only requires a minor action to load, I believe. Um, so you still have plenty of uh, action to take your next attack with. And that does hit, dealing 10 damage as your uh, tiny... Little hand crossbow bolt sticks out of the giant catfish's uh, scaly body. 
Oh, I'm sorry. What am I talking about? They have completely smooth mm. skin. Mm. Wow. Mm. My my uh, family from Tickfa, Louisiana would backhand me for forgetting that catfish don't have scales. Uh, and then, yeah, so you, you pierce him up real good like a pin cushion as he takes a total of 18 piercing damage as you shoot your tiny little hand crossbow bolts into him. Awesome. Hey, Mish, you are in the water, so, you know, it's... Uh, if I'm five feet in the water, I'm I'm underwater. No, 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 not, not, not five feet deep, five feet in. You're like, oh, okay. you're like three feet deep, you know. So if I'm, if I'm, um, I got one hand on the pole now, I guess I can let go and, and maybe shoot him with a, uh, like a guiding bolt. If you want. Gonna click on the target first. So just to be clear, you're you're letting go of the pole, right? Well, no. What can I do? Can I do? I need both hands to cast that spell. No, but you need both hands to hold on to the pole. Well, then I guess I'll just just continue to hold on to the pole because I don't want to let go. Okay. Okay. Well, I, I just wanted to be clear because, like, you know, he's pulling as hard as he can. He's literally pulling you into the water. So, so I guess my action is to continue to pull back up to the shore and pull him my way. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you should go ahead and, and roll your strength uh, check, but you should hold your action until Korg goes so that he can aid you. Okay. I'm not I'm – not, the kind of DM who usually tries to tell you what to do, but in this instance, because I understand that you want to pull the fish in, I'm explaining like the process that would make the most sense. Oh, please do. Please do. So Delos, in action, there you go. All right. Delos is going to... Uh... Remember, you still have the uh, trout on the line. Delos is going to... Do some pre-cooking and cast a firebolt on that guy. Okay. <laughs> what do you do with your uh, crossbow that you shot the trout with? Oh, I, I didn't have a crossbow out. That was someone else. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, Abilius is the one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What did? Uh, what are what are you doing? I do with have that? a crossbow, but I I wasn't the one using it. Yeah, yeah. What what are? I'm gonna shoot firebolt. What are, what are you firebolt, doing with that? One of uh, my, Oh, it's just one second, Delos, please. I'm sorry. Uh, Abilius, what are you doing with that trout that you have on the line? Oh. Did you let go of that, or...? Well, I I, I, I don't know. I guess I, uh, unless I was really stupid, I probably would have hung on to it, but... Um... Yeah, I, I probably just hung on to it. Okay, so so you just kind of like uh, set the line down and step on it, you know, because the trout is pretty much dead. It's not going anywhere. It's just being pulled by the rapids a little. So your pressure on the on the line is going to be enough to stop it from going anywhere. Um, so yeah, you have the trout, but it's still kind of just dragging in the river on the rapids. Um, and then Delos, what do you do? Uh, I'm going to cast Firebolt here. Yeah. That sounds like a good plan. Okay. Yeah, it's so that, that, what, what was not found? Oh, don't worry about that. That. That little error message, that ain't nothing. Just ignore that. Uh, Delos, as you um, go to cast your firebolt at the giant catfish, you hit it right on the head. However, now I have to roll to see if you accidentally snapped the line. Yeah, I wondered if that was going to happen.
<laughs> oh man <laughs> that is okay uh <laughs> So, so I don't know uh, if that's good or bad. N- no, no, that's always, always bad. Uh, uh, to to simplify <laughs> to simplify things for you guys, you always, always, always want me to roll low. You know, doesn't matter what I'm rolling. You want me to roll low. If I roll high, that's bad for you. Um, so, uh, because it's the unbelievable ot ot uh i am going to rule that not only did you snap the line but uh as a result hamish goes flying backwards and needs to make a dexterity save to avoid falling on his back in the river and being like you know i mean you're probably not going to drown but you know I thought you rolled a one, which is bad for you. Didn't you roll it for the fish? No, no, I didn't roll a one. I rolled a one hundred. The one, the one just signifies that it it passed my little test. Oh, there it is. Okay. What am I doing? I'm rolling a what? Dexterity save under your core. That was unskilled decks, but that's okay. You failed. And uh, as a result, Hamish, you fall and and are under the water looking up through murky water at uh, the early morning sky through like a foot of water as you start to sink to the bottom. Somebody get that dwarf. <laughs> it's the only way to get a dwarf to take a bath. Okay, who's next? Timbo. Timbo. Alrighty. So I'm going to. I mean, I'm going to try and shoot the damn thing. So. Oh man, you just cannot miss as as you uh, take aim and shoot the giant catfish that at the moment you release your arrow is still connected to the line. Um, it strikes it right in its thick body and deals another six piercing damage. Oh, I forgot to take off the fire damage too. Alrighty. Okay. All right. So Darcia is like, "Whoa, what's going on? Are we under attack?" And she rolls out of her tent, out of out of her sleeping bag, and out of the tent, and has a um, small dagger in hand, ready to defend herself. So she's no help whatsoever. So, I I guess I'm going to grab Hamish and try to rescue him from certain death. All right, it's going to cost you your standard action, but you don't have to roll or anything. You just, you know, grab your friend and help him stand back up. All right. And then... So is it my turn? Yep. Hamish's turn, yes, sir. Now I can hit him with a guiding bolt, and he's pissed me off. Yeah, and we'll just use your one from before. So uh, it was a hit, and it dealt 19 radiant damage to him. So uh, as you stand back up, 
you summon the power of the tempest and strike him with a bolt it looks like lightning but it deals radiant damage 19 points of it as it strikes the giant catfish and lights him up Okay. Okay. Right click done. In turn. Bottom left hand corner. All right. The giant catfish has gotten whomped on. And normally they are extremely aggressive and would charge in and try to do something. But instead, this one is just going to release a burst of electricity against everybody within 10 feet. Um, so that would be none of you. And um, swims away. Well, there you go. Looks like a Chick-fil-A. So I guess we're eating gold one pieces. Time. Throw some money at these bitches so we can get on down the road. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so to kind of, you know, tie a neat little bow around this scene. Um, oh. as, as yeah, yeah, I I assume that as you guys watch the giant shadow sink into the deeper waters and swim away, uh, you realize that your only hope was to you know hang on to the pole. This thing was way too big to, to try and, you know, fight or, you know, anything like that. But you, you did almost manage to kill it in one round, so that was pretty impressive in and of itself. Anyway, uh, Abilius, he pulls in his trout, and you guys manage to cook it up, each of you downing a bit of the hot fish along with some dry bread and a little, little tiny bit of butter that Jackaro had stored away to just kind of, you know, give the bread some some taste as, as you uh, sit there and and eat your breakfast. breakfast. You kind of, uh, you know, jock back and forth over over you know whose fault it was that the fish got away with with Jackaro kind of you know, rubbing it in, um, you know, that, that, uh, she would have reeled that, that catfish in if you would have just handed her the pole. Okay. So we're fed now what? All right, well, you know, let's uh, go ahead and get the raft back in the water and get back on the uh, road, so to speak. So, yeah, you guys pack up your stuff and climb on board the raft and spend the next several hours kind of sailing lazily down this massive Mississippi-like river and... As you round one of the bends, uh, oh, yeah, that's the one detail I need to know. Uh, uh, who was it that had befriended him? Abilius? Do you do you pick up your friend Jeremiah? Timbo's Grenwy. Oh, Timbo, do do you do you pick up your friend uh, Jeremiah? Uh, I absolutely do. And oh. feed him if I have anything. Oh, don't don't worry. He took care of himself. He ate a couple of uh, crayfish and, and other things from the river overnight. No, he's going to be my buddy. He's oh. going to be catching all my arrows for me. Nice. <laughs> You're going to train him to, to snatch the arrows? Uh, <laughs> uh, so, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you pick up Jeremiah, put him on the raft, sail down the the mighty 
Mississippi-esque river for uh, a few hours. And as you round the final bend before you reach El Cadra, you can see in the distance a shimmering mirage-like wave of heat rising off of the horizon. And uh, Jackaro says, that there be the great desert, nothing but beast men as far as the eye can see. Uh, and so uh, she just kind of describes, you know, for a while, uh, the wilds that exist beyond uh, El Cadra and how, um, you know, there's there's just dangerous, dangerous uh, creatures. And so... Then, as the mirage, you know, kind of fades into the distance as as you, uh, you know, change elevations a little bit here, um, you can see after the mirage fades, a bustling but still somehow very poor looking city. There's a lot of people coming and going you know just bumping into each other but it's kind of like you know post katrina new orleans like right afterwards to where everything is just kind of you know dirty and dilapidated and you know destroyed damaged you know all all the d adjectives and uh so um as you guys yeah detroit it's Detroitified, and so you know, as you guys uh, pull in to to the docks, uh, Jackaro says, "All right, Darcia, what what they got coming back to them?" And and uh, uh, Darcia like kind of checks her notes, and she kind of jots down a few things and then she like holds her quill up to her mouth and she's like hmm and then she like remembers something else and scribbles that down and she says uh Timbo Abilius and Delos have uh two gold pieces each coming back to them Korg gets one, and Hamish gets five silver. Why? And then she starts to list off all of the expenses, the lost fishing pole, every drink that you guys had, any of the rations that you had, the bread, um, uh, all of the... um, costs for... for uh, various like baggage fees, all the times they had to, uh, uh, carry anything plus, uh, overnight fee for having to camp out overnight. Okay. Oh, fine. I paid. Thank you. Oh, you guys already paid. They're refunding you. You get you get a little you get a little bit back at the at the end of the trip. So remember they said there was five and then you get two back. I think it was something like that. Uh, yeah, you get three back. Uh, just to just to make it more worthwhile for you to like not rob them. You know, uh, you check the chest and find that although they certainly appear to be running a bit of a of a job on you when it comes to like all of the hidden fees and all of that that they are honest enough to have left all of your stuff secure safe and unmolested and delivered you safely to El Cadra as promised live another day Uh, unmolested is good yeah speak for yourself I wouldn't have minded (laughs) (laughs) yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they know much about this town Do they know like for example they recommend a decent inn yeah okay. 
take their recommendation and head that way. Huge storm moving in right now, guys. So if uh, I all of a sudden go dark, I probably lost power. Okay. I got a black screen. Can I uh, cast a spell before we leave? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I'm going to take a huge swig of alcohol and then spurt some in the air and then cast my spell. <laughs> Is it actually alcohol you were swigging there or something else? No, I have a whole bunch of alcohol. Uh, what spell are you casting? Uh, I'm trying to find my character. I'm not finding my icon. I must be behind somebody else. Uh, one, two, three, four. Or five. Yeah, right. Okay. Oh yeah, I mean I assumed that that was like upon waking up you were like and instantly armored. No, I have to cast it I guess, and if I cast it too early then I don't have it at night, so one of those things where I have to time it. Ah, gotcha. And then my uh, abjuration school kicks in, so I can give myself a ward for eight hit points. Ah, yes. That was which, all. So which way to the, uh, to the end we're going to try to get some rooms at? Yeah, so... As you guys are making your way through, you see that the whole town is like kind of half a strip mall. Like there's just makeshift shops and tents and carts and everything along every building, every plaza, every alley. Everything is just filled with somebody setting up a table or, you know, uh, just a pop up shop, you know, even like street foods you know, you walk past people just cooking stuff like right in the middle of the street, you know, and uh, it, it's it's all like kind of overwhelming because this is, um, you know, uh, a small town, but everything is like just densely packed. And so you're smelling all of this food that's being cooked. You're smelling the smells of the, the river that you're right alongside all of the people um you know so it's just it's a whole lot to take in even for somebody from a bigger city and all of that because you know this is this is like visiting uh uh india or something like that you know um to where it's just a whole lot of people and uh you also notice that a lot of them uh don't actually speak common they're speaking, uh, you know, what we're just going to call borderish right now. It's the language of the borderlings, and it's it's um, you know not unlike Spanglish, you know, just kind of like a mix of slang and and a couple of different languages from people around here and everything. So, uh, yeah, street poop, you know, and like poop from like horses and camels that have ridden through. And, uh, so it's like San Francisco. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's just, it, it, it's just not, you know, the cleanest place. Um, but it's, it's also one of the most vibrant and, and active places that you've ever seen. Davos is intrigued. He's going to keep an eye out for any place he could possibly buy magic spells. If he happens to see anything like that. Yeah, so in fact, you do 
uh, see a woman who is uh, kind of um, hanging out, you know, just kind of uh, looking all, all, you know, fine and, and just eyeing everybody up real, real carefully. And as she is doing so, she spots Korg and in very heavily accented, uh, common, she says, Oh, uh, big boy, you a long way from home. Come, let Madame Bishka read your fortune. Well, I'm long, you're right. Uh, away from home, yes, yeah, true, but long, nonetheless. <laughs> so... Read my fortune, woman. Come, come, come. All come into Madame Bishka's tent. Uh, where is that? It's over here. I don't... Uh, I mean, it, it's, 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 it's over here. No problem. I can't seem to move my guy laptop, so if you can move me over there. Sure. She says, come on, oh. come on. Oh, you you won't even fit in the tent, big boy. That's the only thing I won't fit in, baby. And then, okay, so she starts to read your fortune. And she kind of looks down at your palm. And she takes and flips it, you know, one way and then the other. And then she holds it up. And she starts to, uh, like, touch each of your fingers, you know, and, and just kind of move your hand around, is studying it and, and twisting it all around. And then she flips it and holds it out, palm up, and reaches into her pouch at her side. And she pulls something out and slaps it down on your hand and when it does it creates like a um flash paper kind of fire um suddenly like a little flame but it's just flash paper basically uh you know comes on your hand and when when uh it disappears and you can and you can see your hand again all of a sudden, um, you notice that there's a black, like, mark on your hand. It's definitely a symbol of some kind, but you don't recognize it. What comed on your hand? <laughs> uh, say, what means the woman? She says, this is a ward against evil spirits you are very haunted there are demons about you mm. but again Nothing this is I like mean, this is no, like so yeah. this is like so heavily accented plus you know that these like bumpkins are like uh superstitious and everything so like you know you wouldn't you wouldn't find this to be strange per se or anything. No, I tell her thanks, woman. Uh know you a treasure dealer. Thanks for the uh what I already knew. Uh <laughs> I've been cursed since birth. <laughs> and she says No, heed my warning, giant one. If if you do not Atone before the sun goes down. Much danger will find you. Uh, say, okay, so what's my atonement, woman? Say you. Maybe she knew you were a Catholic priest before? 
the <laughs> the the atonement is not clear all i can see are the haunting spirits the evil spirits that that are all around you they call to you and if you are still in this place come nightfall your life may be over which place your tent or uh this you know this city or this world or can you be a little bit more specific yes then be a little bit more specific no <laughs> okay well no you a treasure dealer i'll deal with my demons as i've dealt with them since my childhood as in do not take this warning boy. lightly big boy you will you will regret it you will regret it and with that all of a sudden she throws a something down on the ground and a pillar of red smoke rises up and she's gone. That was a little oh. overly dramatic. Does she leave anything behind in the tent? Yeah. I'm gonna loot her. As as you uh <laughs> getting the gypsy curse. She's not really a gypsy gypsy per se. Uh more more like a um uh what 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 would they call them like um a seer yeah a fake okay. a faker <laughs> uh uh she she she's kind of like a like a seer like a modern day like um psychic you know tarot card reader kind of kind of uh you know vibe um anyway uh behind in the tent she did in, indeed leave all kinds of stuff uh silk pillows all around the floor that you guys were able to sit on as she was reading korg's uh future here and then also a giant glass hookah kind of off in the corner hmm, hmm. well Sorry, guys. I'm cursed. Um, if you don't want to be yeah. friends with me anymore, I totally understand. Have you killed anyone in your past, Korg? As many people as I possibly could. Maybe that's what she's referring to. Giant catfish. Um, Maybe those are the evil spirits that haunt you. Well, we killed them once. We can kill them again. But uh, I think that we need to sell our loot because uh, it's let's, let's check our loot. Let's go. Let's get a room and let's, let me detect magic on everything, like the sword and all that kind of stuff. And then uh, and then we can go sell our loot. Why don't we just use this tent? Yeah, I guess we're good. We got all our shit in there, right? Yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do detect magic on all the stuff we have in the chest. And uh, especially the sword that looked really, really nice as you described it that one time. Yeah. Okay. So, um, as you guys go and find an inn, first of all, let me be very clear here. Like, the best inn in El Cadra is like saying you're grabbing the best inn in some, you know, podunk uh you know town in in you know some border town somewhere uh you know it, it's it's motel 8 at best here you know we are we are definitely not talking about um anything all that nice oh you just leave jeremiah in the middle of the street he sees how it is no he comes along uh so uh you guys check into the room but like the first thing you see are like flies everywhere stains on you know the floor and uh you're lucky that this one actually has a floor you passed a couple that they're just wooden structures over dirt floor 
Well, that's, uh, that's all we got. Same. All right. So there are a total of four beds. I could sleep in the corner. I don't mind. And against the wall. But, but I want to. Are we in the room now? Yeah. Because I want to. Yeah, yeah. You guys are in the room now. I want to catch magic. I don't see, I don't see it up here. I guess I'm going to sleep. I can't hear you there. Uh, uh, you can't hear me? No, Did... you, go, you cut out on me, it seems. De detect magic isn't in the macros. You have to go to your sheet for that. So we're still in the tent. You want to move us to the inn? Uh, yeah, uh, the inn is kind of right here. Let me just put you there. You're not going to have an interior view per se other than like the dining area right here. But yeah, the inn is like all inclusive right here. So what's it cost? It costs one silver piece each to uh, outrageous to rent the room. <laughs> the same thing. But but because the innkeeper sees you and hears you guys speaking common, sees the large chest, and suspects that you might be adventurers. Suddenly, he uh, says, wait, too many people per room. One gold piece. Which amounts to twice as much as what he would have charged anybody else. So instead of five silver Ever. pieces, it's, it's ten. Okay. I'm going to pay him and say I'm crazy. Can we haggle? Can we haggle with this guy? Yeah, <laughs> you absolutely can. Uh, you know, so you choose how you want to attempt to haggle with him. You know, you can, you can try to intimidate him. You can try to persuade him. You can try to, um, be diplomatic about it and like offer like, you know, some compromise. Like if you charge us the regular rate, we'll, um, you know, clean up the room before we leave or, you know, like, you know, just, you know, there's all kinds of ways of going about this. So you choose what skill you want to try to use to try and and haggle here. Well, it's definitely intimidate. Who's got intimidate? Because that's our group style so far, right? What's the matter? Yeah, what, guess... What's the oh, matter? Your 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 mama never leveled up your speech craft. It's like let's just let's just fuck some shit up. That's what we do. I like how you guys I'm are like. I'm gonna get to a room with this big magic. I, I like how you guys are like, let's see. We're going to a trade town that has like black market, possibly magic items and all of that. Let's pick a fight. And so, uh, uh, Abilius, you in your most charming yet off putting, uh, way, you step up to the counter and with a flourish, you you um, take off your hat and, and you say, My good sir, you see, we adventurers have been killing all day as we travel here. And now we are tired. And wish to slake our bloodlust with rest. But if we cannot find this rest, perhaps we are doomed to continue to kill. And he kind of like gets this look in his face and he's like, Yeah, uh, you know, on second thought, why don't you guys just go ahead and, uh, take the uh the stable rooms for free and 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 he and he kind of gives you a uh gesture towards the back and you can see that there's rooms for um 
the people who who work here and and do all of that one of them is empty and contains uh several uh piles of hay um that are not completely uh covered in horse shit and all of that and um so you know there's a room that you can just have for free that he points you towards looks like an upgrade nice haggling guys So just to explain, because you chose intimidation, you know, he is intimidated. Uh, if you had failed your intimidation, he probably would have just ran you out of there or called the guards or something. But because you scared him enough, he's going to just leave you alone. But he also doesn't want you in the main building. And so now he's kind of shunted you guys off to the to the uh, area where like the horses and all of that are kept. Oh, don't worry. We're shitting in here before we leave. Now we get him. I think the dwarf does that anyway. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So, are we settled in here now that I can cast detect magic on our, on our stuff? No one's watching us, looking at us. Uh, yeah. So there's there's not really like a door, but there is kind of like a half tattered uh piece of cloth that goes over like the doorway and so even though like people can definitely still see in it's not like they can just see in we could Korg you could just stand in the doorway yeah. I'm gonna stand in the doorway and it's big enough to let a horse through so so Korg okay. doesn't quite block it up as nice as any doorway but still you I'll know. stand in the doorway too we'll try to get as many of us in there just kind of block anyone any peering eyes you got you guys are playing human tetris to try and fill up the doorway so i got i got 10 minutes and i'm just looking through the stuff in the chest and mainly focusing yeah. on the weapons that you described is really really ornate and really really nice which kind of may, leads me to believe it might be magic yeah so, yeah so. yeah so uh the compass is definitely magic and in the rest of the chest you find nothing else magic except one very, very strange looking coin. It has markings on it that have faded over time. And so it's kind of like a really old, like Roman coin to where you're not quite sure what was on it. However, that's just what was in the chest going over to uh the the um armor and sword you can detect two things one is the armor has a very very faint aura of um fey magic around it you're not really sure like what is going on with it and it is super faint like whatever it's doing it's it's barely detectable and certainly doesn't like come across as a maybe, maybe dormant maybe something's dormant. right right I mean. yeah you know it could be dormant it could be like faded and like you know it's like a battery to where like yeah it's still got a little bit of life in it but it's definitely dying um, but either way, you can tell that, like, there's no, like, mechanical effect actively happening with the, with the armor right now, but you're not quite sure, like, this is going to take further study. However, the sword, once you, once you pull the sword from its sheath and examine it closely, casting detect magic and looking at it, you can see that there is actually a magical enchantment not on the blade but on the hilt and the way that that the magic works because um this is kind of like a really simple one that that you're able to um um determine right away you know what it is and what it does is that whoever is holding on to the hilt 
of the sword cannot be disarmed unless they willingly release the sword. It's like a stickum hilt. Ooh. Short sword, right? Short sword. Anybody have that weapon as a Give it to the to the frog. <laughs> uh, maybe the ranger could use the short sword, maybe. I don't know. If I don't he can use just get his hands on it. I mean I I mean I could, but I don't I don't like I don't know. I thought maybe Abelius would actually use it more. The armor fits what? Who does it? Because used to be in the old D&D guide that magic armor would kind of stretch to fit whoever. Oh yeah, no, no, definitely not. Uh, it it is not made for a dwarf, and it would not fit the the giant man Korg. The rest of you, it is generally able to fit. Do I know? Like, could I get like a general knowledge check on fey magic and what this might be about? Like. Good or bad or neutral? General knowledge? Uh, yeah, so... Uh, or like well, arc- Arcana or whatever yeah, it might be. Yeah, go ahead and roll Arcana to, to see what you would know about Fey magic. Bell should tell me the schools of magic, if any. Uh, okay. Yeah, so that's, that's the thing, is... Um, the the sticky hilt one i think that's transmutation um so that one's simple enough uh the coin uh the the weird markings on it and like faded markings that you can't tell what it is also seem to somehow be tied with the magic to where you're getting like a fuzzy signal it's like when you're a kid and you're trying to get the naughty channels in and like it's it's like half faded and then it almost comes in for a second and you think you might have saw something, but you're not sure, you know, and, and so you can't tell what the coin is. Um, but for the fey magic, when it comes to uh, the armor, uh, they don't actually um, have like the school like that, like fey magic is its own school. It's um, basically what fey magic covers is like all of the primordial nature magic back when um, the, the first beings were, were being created and had far more powerful uh, magics and all of that than, than what everybody else is capable of. And so, um, if, if you have something with a, with a fey, you know, magic enchantment to it, chances are that it's very old and that it is, um, strange, like that it uses magical powers differently. It's like a European plug versus an American plug, you know, like it just uses everything differently. It's just weird. And um, the compass has uh, divination magic. Okay, who wants to try on the armor? What are you the regularly sized human folk? I don't think I can even wear this armor. I guess this D and D doesn't have limitations on armor for magic users, I guess, or does it? Uh, it has limitations on what you're proficient in, and if you wear armor that you're not proficient in, there's penalties and all that. Yeah, so that would that would, I, I'm out then. So what time of day is it? Uh, right now it is before noon. Okay, so that's if somebody wants to try it on, they can. Then I would say we we like. We we take the big stuff that we don't want to haul around anymore. That we can all, I'm sure we can all buy some buy some leather pouches and stuff like that, and split up the coins and and um, uh, gems and all that jazz, and we go sell the bigger stuff. Yeah, and as far as uh, the rest of the loot and all of that goes, uh, didn't you guys 
uh, have the 50 gold and then the 500 gold. So it should be 110 gold pieces each if you do it evenly. But, but you have not sold all of the other items. So you might get more or less depending if you just want to split up just the coins right now i can i can arbitrarily decide how much is just coins so that you guys have some walking around money yeah let's do that okay uh i am going to say that there is 150 uh gold pieces in assorted loose coins um so 30 each Okay, and then probably try to go sell this stuff, right? Yeah, so that that would be the the general um, plan is to is to sell your loot. So, uh, you know, how do you guys want to go about doing that? Is there a particular skill that is like is persuasion or something that can be used to like haggle a good price to sell all this stuff? Yes, but first, you must find a buyer. Right, I'm just trying to figure out who has the highest skill set for this. Who's best at this? Hey, I'm, I'm looking back at some notes here where I saw that we had like 500 gold pieces worth of jewels as well and 250 worth of silver. That was all in the chest that we had at the one, at the one time. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the chest. I thought it was 500 total. It's 500 worth of jewels and then 200 worth of uh, silver and gold. Okay, uh, fair enough. Then then that's what we'll go with. So it's actually 40 gold pieces each. That that you guys. Uh, th thank you for reminding me of that. I didn't have my note in front of me about exactly how much treasure you guys had on you. Um, so so we had some we had some scroll, some scroll cases, maps of the swamps, and those kind of things. But that's we'll just keep that stuff. I guess, yeah, that familiar. that's what I that's what I assumed you guys were hanging on to. Um, yeah. But uh, as as well as the sword and armor, etc. Uh, but so, yes, so if it's five hundred gold pieces worth of jewels and goblets and other assorted crap, and two hundred gold pieces worth of coins. Then you guys have 40 coins each and still 500 gold pieces worth of stuff to try and sell. Now you might get more, you might get less, but first you have to try and find somebody to buy this stuff to begin with. Let's go over this tent where there's NPCs. Would perception help count. trying to find anything? Like, I don't know. Yeah, I, I mean, possibly you're... You're in a new city, so you definitely don't know where everybody is and all of that. So perhaps perception would give you an idea as far as like, you know, um, go up to the roof of the inn and look around and see if you can spot like somebody. But like uh, Korg was saying, it appears that there's kind of like a central uh, gathering place where like a lot of people are kind of shopping. So that might be. You know, a good place to encounter an NPC or two that you can ask what what up. Yeah, we're gonna go there and ask what up. Usually around the water, right? Around the fountain. Yeah, yeah. You know, just uh, around the tent, around the fountain. You know, there's just there's just people and and uh npcs and you know all of that just kind of milling about shopping talking haggling um it's not quite as hectic as the stock exchange but you know like that's a better analogy than like picturing people just kind of like politely shopping at like walmart or something you know i haven't seen people politely shopping at walmart since 1990 uh let's go ask some people anyone that looks uh, i guess somewhat friendly all right so as you're kind of looking around uh two people jump out at you right away uh one of them is a very finely dressed man being accompanied by a very fierce looking uh warrior 
in full armor, including a face covering that uh, hides everything but his eyes, you recognize instantly that this is like the type of guard that only the most wealthy can afford. And he just kind of silently hovers over the man who is shopping at this tent looking at various fine jewelry. Um, the other is a ordinarily dressed for either a merchant or just a regular person, um, you know, figure, but you notice something weird. He has greenish skin and huge pig-like tusks sticking out of his uh, bottom jaw. This being is an orc, and you have never seen one not, you know, attacking and raiding a village or, you know, anything like that. This orc is walking freely amongst the people, and, you know, uh, people aren't recoiling from him, and it is very strange, um, the, the lands where you come from, uh, you know, orcs are, like, almost always attacking. Well... Uh, can you maybe over by Delos? We live in a new diverse world with Wizards of the Coast, so evil orcs judge. Are, are over with. He loves you. I speak Orcish. Hey, go go talk to him. I do too. Um, I'm going ready, with him. I'm ready to speak Orc with him. everybody yeah, I was gonna say I got expertise on persuasion so I can barter and if and the, somebody else who has a high charisma can uh, assist me and we can try to get the best money we can there we go yeah perfect okay so can I talk to the orc yeah ab absolutely okay so I'm gonna say uh you know, I'm uh, I'm big on Orclaw's manner, and uh, <laughs> I don't have my shirt on right now, but uh, I'm down. Uh, know you a play? Know you a person who might be interested in uh, jewels and finery? He says. Tomorrow, I leave and make the long trip to Al Qadim. Anybody who is a merchant goes there. Oh, shit. Um, are there fire wasps? I don't like fire wasps. So, uh, is, are there fire wasps between you and there? In the shit. desert, you find sand and death. But uh, merchants, uh, I'm sorry, sand, death, and merchants, question mark? The, the uh, merchants are making the trip through the sand and the death. Well, are there any merchants around here? I mean... There are many merchants around here, all of whom will rob you in one way or another. Eh, yeah, well, we're used to that. Um, do you know where any of them are, uh, somewhere around here close? I mean, four lives matter, so... Uh, I, Kurog, am a merchant. Well, uh, would you be interested in some nice jewelry and, uh... I have, and, you know, I have no money until I unload my wares in al Qadim. Then I will buy your garbage. Well, it's, it's not garbage. I mean, it's, you know, it looks like garbage the, to Korog. Well, I I think it's really nice. Hey, uh, you would. I know. Well, who am I? Um, so you're the only merchant around here? Or, uh... Well... 
Anybody? I am not the only merchant. We can try the wealthy guy. Yeah, let's try the wealthy guy. All right, well, thanks. Uh, we'll, we'll take that under advisement. Okay. Good luck. He, he may not be interested in our stuff. All right. So, what do you do? Let me go talk to the wealthy dude. You go to step towards the wealthy dude, and his bodyguard steps in between you and swiftly draws a scimitar and gives you a look through his uh, eyes, which are the only part of him that's really visible, that says if you take one more step, you will die. Mm. All right, I'll say uh, apologies, my lord. We did not mean to uh, to startle your guard. Um, we are simply traitors and wish to know if you or anyone else here um, wants to buy our wares. Uh, the, the wealthy guy kind of looks over at, at the bodyguard and says, Oh, take it easy on them. Look it, they're obviously just poor, dumb merchants. Exactly. Exactly. With a, 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 a with something that we just don't need anymore. And with um, that, he sheathes his uh, scimitar and steps to the side of the wealthy man. He says, I am a beezy. What can I do for you, peasants? Well, we'd like reparations. Um, I mean, we know that that's kind of on the table politically right now. Um, but for now, uh, we have some nice candelabras and artwork and uh, jewels and stuff that, uh, that uh, we'd kind of like to sell if you might perhaps be interested in our peasantry wares. <laughs> You obviously are very far from home if you do not know who a beezy is and that I would never buy this garbage. All right. Well, okay. Who would buy this garbage? Kind sir. <laughs> kind sir. You should be addressing me as your prince. All right, my my prince, my lord, who would uh who would buy this garbage? If you care to tell us. You speak so disrespectfully. You western no, I didn't. You westerners know nothing of customs and respect. If my custom team was shitting on the street, then yeah, you're right. And you should get that. Yeah. It's all curved, man. Go see a blacksmith. <laughs> yep. Kenny Curvecock over here. What are you doing? A BZ looks very insulted and says, You strangers come to our city and think that you are so superior. If... My brother were here. He would have your hands cut off. Yeah, but he's not here, uh, right? He, by your own admittance, he's uh, not here. If his brother was here, they could probably form a full set of teeth between them. <laughs> that, uh, that does it. You have insulted Abizi. I go now to my brother's palace. And summon him. If you are still here when we get back, your heads will be on the walls by nightfall. Well, I mean, are you within striking distance of Korg? Is... If you were to step one step closer, I would be in striking distance. Sounds like an overreaction. 
Uh, well, we're murder hobos. I mean, maybe it's, uh, you know. Please, stranger, do not hesitate. A beezy prays day and night that a motherfucker would. <laughs> would hesitate? Wait, wait, I'm, I'm confused. I'm sorry, I don't understand your language. You're praying that I would hesitate or that I wouldn't hesitate. I, I, I'm confused. Sorry, I'm, I'm not that smart. I'm just, uh, you know, I'm poor. Make like that dumbass frog your friend is carrying and jump. All right, well, I'm going to attack this motherfucker. I'm just, yeah. <laughs> frog over here, by the way, because this frog can probably settle this right away. No, nah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to attack the BZ. If I die, then I will have not died in vain. First came through? I'm going to say, the last person who called me a motherfucker, um, their head was on the end of my greatsword, as will you be now. It's time. It's fucking You brother. You did hear me say the word prince, right? Uh, yeah, I don't care. I mean, I mean okay. what, what are we going to do? Okay. I mean, anybody? Dealer? I'm down. Oh, yeah, fuck him up. <laughs> I have a feeling we're going downhill. Yeah. <laughs> or is it uphill? Oh, fuck it. Yeah, well, I'm sorry. I'm a dick. These are little five. Um, a uh, BZ! You say my name right, I will carve it into your body. Yeah, well, I'll roll a three. I'm ready. You've insulted me for the last time. I mean, you know, motherfucker, you know, was, I don't know, where I come from, that's a uh, egregious term. Who are we missing? Timbo. Sorry, I was looking. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to I'm going to hit hit a BZ with a guiding bolt, but I'm going to channel divinity at the same time, which maxes out my my damage on him. Okay. <laughs> so here's guiding bolt. Isn't that the one I want? Yeah. Oh, I didn't hit that. Token on the screen. Do I choose? Uh, why don't I roll three? So. All right. Tell me, so, he tell me to choose a target. So as you target a BZ with your guiding bolt, he ducks. And your bolt kind of flies into the tent and and causes everything to light up and and blow with the winds of a storm. And like everybody kind of turns and looks at you and notices that there's some shit going down. So did I miss him? It didn't seem to fire, though. Yeah, it fired. Uh, you, you, you missed. Oh, yeah. Oh, there it is. Real good. Hell yeah, now everybody knows we're in town. The murder heroes are here. F some shit up. Let's go. Everywhere we go, these these NPCs insult us, and we're just done. Yeah. I have been... just be called the NPC killers or something. <laughs> I, I have been told that my NPCs have a tendency to come off kind of dickish. Like... I tried to play Kurug as being like kind of friendlyish for an orc, but like Abizi is a is a spoiled rotten noble. Like he doesn't no, give he, a crap about you guys, you know. Oh, uh, who would ever say that you're NPCs for ticks? I mean, nobody said that. No, no, I, I've been told that by other people. <laughs> oh, okay, well, we're just yeah. No, no, it's it, it's something I'm well aware of that that like for some reason my NPCs are dicks. I don't I don't know. Well, you're <laughs> batting fucking thousand percent, so it's okay as long as we can keep killing them. But we're, we're all good. 
Jackarole liked you guys. She partied with you, gave you some alcohol. Like, I don't know. What what am I supposed to do? Like, what do my NPCs got to do? Walk around handing out gold pieces and hand jobs? Oh, oh yeah. That would be, be nice. Fade to black. <laughs> All I know is BZ is about to fucking die. Yeah, I mean, and then you guys are going to have to flee from El Cadre or something. <laughs> Oh, that's all right. Yeah. We've proven our ability to kill fucking bugs and wasps and shit. We we will so persevere. We can, we can kill the beezy. He might have some good shit on him. He Let's started it. Who started it? Hot right, Tambo, what do you got? Do it, baby. All right. Boom! That's, that's it. Oh, I missed them. As your arrow flies through the air, uh, a beezy whips out his scimitar and slices it in half. Oh, Jesus. Okay. I'm going to uh, scream, How dare you insult orcs! Hoping that orc still hears me. Die, you racist <laughs> bastards. <laughs> yeah. And then I'm going to cast Frostbite on the veteran. I don't know if I have this one in my... It's new. I don't know if I have it in my... Thing. Yeah, I'm going to have to go to my spell list. Hold on. Yeah, sorry. I, I didn't see that when I was setting it's up. It's new. Today. It's new. I've got a three. And you said you're targeting the veteran with this. That's correct. So I think he rolls Constitution saving throw. And he passes. Is that advantage? No, but he gets the first roll. Ah, I see. Okay. So on a failed save, you take d6 and has this advantage, and I don't think you get anything on a. Yeah. No. Nope. Anything it, else? It, it looks like no damage, no. Yeah. No effect. Right. Right. Oops. Would have been nice because then he'd have disadvantage on his weapon roll. So you guys are watching as a BZ good. just spins his scimitar around, deflecting arrows, dodging fire and frost and thunder and lightning. Yeah, but we've got the frog. Yeah. Oh, you should have thrown the frog at him. So who's next? All right. So the veteran is going to step forward and attack Korg, because yeah. he's been kind of like the aggressor. Oh, uh, wait a minute. I, I'm going to call the motherfucker. Uh, come on, man. It is a critical hit as he pulls out his scimitar and slices you across the chest for 10 slashing damage. Oh, great. And it ruins your shirt. Wait a minute, I, I tried to do the uh, minus... I think I lost you guys there again. So... Okay, you're back. Minus ah. 10. Oh, and it, it looks ah. like it hurt. There's blood dripping down, your shirt's cut. Yeah, I got something for that motherfucker.
Who's next? Yeah, it's it's, it's me. Uh, I'm still figuring out the mechanics of this thing here to do a sneak attack. I can. I got advantage on the veteran. Yeah, so I can. Get yeah, you threat. you you have advantage on the veteran, but you have to make your attack first. Okay. And then you add the sneak attack damage. But we're just yeah. gonna add the six now that you rolled it. So. But yeah, you just you make your attack, and then if it hits, then you can add your sneak attack. Uh, you actually missed, cause you, you don't I mean, I'm gonna you, be you don't have advantage on this attack. You just get your sneak attack because there's an ally within five feet. But as you re-roll, then you hit. And get your 12 total damage. Okay, yeah, thanks for explaining that. Yeah, yeah, I just, I, I just wanted to make sure that you understood the exact mechanics of what was happening so that it wasn't like, wait, what do you mean? You know, yeah, so you still got your sneak attack, just not advantage, but then you re-rolled with your lucky and you hit. So you were about to to have your, your rapier uh, parried by the uh, veteran pulling out his second scimitar. Uh, and so he pulls out his second scimitar, but just as he does so, the blade catches on the hilt just enough, and he's unable to get it out in time. And instead of deflecting your rapier, you stab him right in the... Um, I don't Bottle. Know, let, let's say... Let's say... Uh, ear. <clears throat> And, and, uh, you like basically cut his ear right off. No, your ears you keep. And, uh, and, uh, so, so it went through his little, um, face mask hole and like ripped his ear off. And so even though the blow isn't like lethal, it hurts a lot and it's bleeding and, and he doesn't like it. Yeah. Well, it's kind of embarrassing because I was aiming for his chachi. Oh, well, then, yeah, that is completely embarrassing, but still somehow beneficial. Yeah, he might want to see somebody about that. <laughs> My ear doctor. There you go. So I will, uh, um, bonus action, cunning action. I, I still got my movement, though, yeah? Yeah. All right, so I will, uh, take my movement and do my bonus action hide. Aw, I thought you were going to leave my threatened square so I could hit you. Yeah, I was going to do that. All right. Uh, yeah, so you hide. Um, we won't roll to see how well you... Well, no, let's let's just go ahead and roll your stealth now so that we can see how well you're hidden, and then we'll make a decision as to whether somebody's looking around for you or not. Yeah, so you kind of like are ducking behind the uh, tent pole a little. Yeah. A BZ. A BZ does not shy away from battle, especially not when magic is being cast at him. So he sees that Abilius is right there and positions himself behind him and attacks him with his uh, rapier. Rapier. And now he does have advantage because he's flanking you. All right, so he would have hit. I see you have used Lucky. Uh, so roll d20 and choose whether the attacker's roll uses their d20 roll or yours. So should I use yours? Well, 
if my number is high, that's probably not good. So, yeah, let's stick with his. Oh, it still hits you, but I was hoping I'd get that crit that you rolled there. That'd be sweet. Yeah, I don't want that. No, I do. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, you uh, take two damage um, from his rapier just kind of glancing off of you as you mostly manage to deflect it but it like tears a little cut in your arm nothing bad just a little superficial wound Never neck. and Abizu's done correct okay so now you do him. you do have advantage against the veteran because you're flanking him right now. Okay, well he's about to get an action surge, and I'm gonna roll two great weapon master attacks on his ass. So I guess that's great sword, but you've got the macro for great weapon roll type advantage. Yeah, we're gonna do the first attack. Are we supposed to roll initiative again? No, sir. All right. You br you bring your great sword down on the veteran who tries in vain to block it with his scimitar, but your weapon's weight just presses down on him as, as he takes 12 slashing damage. All right. So, uh, okay. So we'll do the second attack through action surge. Yeah. Um, and yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so this time he's ready for it and he kind of rolls out of the way, uh, making it to where you don't hit him. So I missed him. Yeah, team. yeah. Mm. All right, well, I'm about to die, so. Yeah, I assume those other guards are suddenly getting interested. Buddy, help. Help. And use a heal. Somebody, anybody. So whose turn? My turn? Uh, your turn okay. Yeah, as soon, as soon as it skips to the next round, I'll reshuffle the turn order. I think it's the guard's turn. Or do you want to hit in turn? Oh, sorry. Okay, one yeah. second. One second. Okay, yeah. So this guard hears what's going on and decides to uh, rush in and he sees Abizi and he says, My lord, get behind me! And... He pulls him behind him. What about the orc? What about the orc? Is he not troubled that this guy was insulting orcs? He is in the initiative order. Okay, great. I didn't see him. So, so Korg is right in front of me, right? This is Hamish. Yes, sir. Yeah. So I could, I could cure wounds on him. I could reach out and touch him and cure wounds. Yes, you could. Touch me, me. Believe in me. Here. Oh, I need a touch. Sun always rise on three. Don't I get, don't I get... So basically, I roll a one and a two plus my well, hold, plus my spell. Got, it's got to be higher than three. Uh, the second uh, level. It's not adding your um, wisdom modifier for some reason, uh, which is a four, right? So I got seven. Yeah, so isn't it one to eight per level. Isn't it one to eight per level? It no, 
per level of the spell. Uh, yeah, so it's seven. Thank you. So can I do anything else, or is that it for my turn? Uh, hold on. Yeah, that was your standard action, so you can still move. So I can move. All right, come on. Timbu. All right, well, <laughs> okay. I'm sorry, pressing the wrong one. I was wondering, there's no way I can uh, move up to here, right? Hold on. Up to where? So I'm trying to, it's not going to. Oh, there we go. That, is that outside of my movement range? Uh, yeah, I mean, that's straight up a, up a wall, wall. right yeah. now. Um, the only way to access that is by going inside the building and then like climbing up through the building. So that would take um, some time. Can you skip up on the fountain there, Timbo? Yeah, that's uh, how high is that fountain wall? I mean, two feet or something like that. Okay, just enough to get, I guess, uh, a clearer shot. I just don't want to be, like, shooting through Korg and stuff. Yeah, and maybe this will also give me some protection, the, the statue there. So, okay. So I'm going to go for the uh, veteran. Or, actually, no. Uh, Abizi is still in range. Kill him, Miller. There we go. Now it's fixed. And I missed. Yeah, so Timbo, as you uh, jump up on the fountain and take aim, uh, your arrow, unfortunately, is deflected by the guard's shield as he quickly raises it. That's good. No, this is not looking good. All right, well, I'm going to... Okay. okay, Dallas is going to cast his frostbite again on the veteran again and yell... For all orcs, for all orc kind, you bastards. I love it. <laughs> so you're going to have to roll another constitution saving there. All right, so I fail that one. And so this I take is... four cold damage and have disadvantage. On your next weapon attack roll. Okay. Icy frost begins to form around the armor of the veteran. He does not like it. All right, so this guard steps up, and he is also now protecting Prince Abizi. The, vet oh, yeah. the veteran, surrounded by all of you, decides that he is going to make two scimitar attacks against Korg. So the first one is at disadvantage. Oh, 
Oh, it would have been a crit. Instead, I don't know if that hits or just hits. I think that just hits your armor class. Yep. Yep. Okay, so eight slashing damage from the first scimitar. And oh, it, to me? And yep. It, Set, yeah, uh, 17. Does a 17 hit? And, uh, 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 hold on. Uh, hold on. Uh, what would it be under weapons? It's under core stats. Well, uh, armor class is 17. Yep. All right, so you take eight slashing damage, and then as he spins around with his other sword, he crits somehow, they're saying that's a crit. It's a weird-looking roll. Uh, he crits you. Um, the first hit kind of like knocks you, you know, almost to the ground. And then the second hit comes down uh, right across your chest in the other direction so that he almost made like an X across your chest, dealing 12 damage and incapacitating you. You are no longer capable of fighting right now. You're not You're not technically unconscious. Um, like I, I determine like unconsciousness based on like a variety of factors um you're you're still alive but you're just like down on one knee and unable to fight oh i'm at minus two so i'm about to die and this guard uh can't quite see what's going on so uh he um moves over here to see if he can get a better vantage, but he ends up being blocked by more people and everything. So he can't quite see what's going on. Oh, yeah. Korog runs over to Delos and says, my friend, do you idiots wish to live? Occasionally, yes. Then, then put this on and follow Korog quickly. And he and he reaches into his pack and pulls out a couple of uh, the turban wraps that he is wearing of different colors. And he hands you enough to to hand to your allies. And uh, he immediately begins to take off down this. Uh, alley over here um yeah what's what say you guys are we gonna get the hell out of here like aladdin run yeah we kind of got a beat feet out of here yeah all right i was hoping there were rings of invisibility but i'll take the the headscarf Abizi says, no, I wish to kill these infidels myself. But the guards are like, no, my prince, you are too precious to, to risk. Prince Abizi sleeps with goats, I have proof. Hey, can I throw uh, lining powder as a bonus action? Uh, no, that that would be a, a standard action because it'd be an okay, attack. Dude. Ah. Everybody go away. They're still there. So what? I'm going to move on here side and then uh, gank the guard more. <laughs> oh no as you as you uh you know stab the veteran 
dealing 18 more damage. He grunts Ooh. painfully as your rapier pierces, uh, you know, his leg, and he is now slowed. Yeah, you know what? That time I was actually aiming for his other ear. Can I, uh, as a gauge, uh, can I skewer his uh, ear off the ground with the, my rapier and take it with me from my necklace of human ears? Uh, roll a uh, dexterity check at <laughs> at um, disadvantage because you're trying to move, attack, and scoop something up at the same time. You try, but it just slips off the end. Oh. And somehow uh, lands on your foot that, as you're moving, kicks it up to your hand, and you snatch it and put it right in your pocket. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to disengage just to get away from his range, but uh, I want to set myself up so I can uh, kind of you know, Turkish back-to-back -back carry Korg out of there. Yep. And oh. I don't know if that's Turkish or not. I just made that shit up. Yeah, yeah. Korg, roll a death saving throw. <sighs> How do I do that? Click on your token. And then it's the first macro. He just dropped out of Discord. Good. Wrong button. Wrong button. Yeah. We said I only have Prince Ali, Ali B, Ali Babo on my head. What the hell? That's because I, I put it there. I said Aladdin. <laughs> <laughs> And, you know, he's a BZ, so, you know. <laughs> Prince Abubu. Bob, what? Wrong, to wrong token, Bob. I, I sort of heard you there, Bob. We're waiting for him. If I were to try my cantrip, spare the dying on him. What does that do in this situation? Your voice is a little low there, Barry. Yeah, it, it is a little low. Um, st uh, spare the dying instantly stabilizes him. Okay, I mean that's when it gets when Bob comes back and he gets around to me. That's what I'm gonna try to do because I can do a cantrip and something else. I think. Bob, yeah. you back? And he's got your storm there, Chad. Hello? Hey. Okay, where's death saving throw on here? Okay, so click you on your token, and it's yeah. the first macro up on the top left. Oh. Uh, shit. I've got this. I got this initiative thing in the way here. Shit. Oh, you yeah. Save? Yeah, sometimes you just got to move it, or you can double click on it and, and move minimize your it. Around. But yeah, death save. Okay, I'm trying to move it on this. Uh, okay. Death save. Normal? Normal. Can I take a healing potion or just death save? Just death save. <laughs> All right, I submitted. All right, so as you are fallen to Ooh. one knee, holding yourself up with your with your great sword 
almost collapsing, you you cough and a spurt of blood comes out. You can tell that you're you're not doing great. I'm dead. Okay. No, you gotta fail three times to actually die. So can, can he again. keep moving? Can he can he move? He can't move like on his own, but with help he can he can walk to where you don't have to carry carry him. Okay. Okay, so are we uh, are we still in combat like doing order? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, because I was gonna do something else. Alright, so the guards continue to uh you know protect Prince Abizi. So do I have any more spells? Spell left? Uh, you cast cure and uh, detect magic. Uh, that was two um, first level spells. Uh, so you should have one more, or two more, one or two more. So, so. Well, I can still touch a Korg and, and add a heal to him then. Touch me. You, you could. But, so, but, but I could also, here's what I'm going to do. I, I have a, the cantrip, uh, thaumaturgy, thaumaturgy, I don't know what how to say it. Thaumaturgy, anyway, so, yeah. Thaumaturgy, I can do strange things. So I'm going to, I'm going to make my, my eyes glow, right? So it kind of freaks this, this guy out in front of me. So yeah. he doesn't know what to think about me. Reach, reach over and touch Korg and do um, healing again. Okay, uh, so the the way that it works... How does is, that order work? Yeah, so the, the way that it works is normally uh, you can't cast um, a spell in the, in the same round, um, but uh, As a cantrip, I I've heard that cantrips are like the except, could. exception to that. Yeah, right. so uh, I have just adopted as the as the rules as intended or whatever that indeed as long as one of them is a bonus action and you're not trying to cast two leveled spells such as you know that you can cast one cantrip and one spell since a cantrip is like kind of a minor magical thing um so when you cast thaumaturgy um your eyes begin to spark and light up with electrical beams you know shooting out from the sides and then you uh uh, speak in a booming, thunderous voice and lay your hand on Korg and lightning, like, courses over his body, healing him for, uh, how much? What, what do you, what do you roll? Click on it. Oh, I need to touch him first. Yeah, yeah. Touch me. So, seven points. So, you, mm. no, you get all seven in fifth edition when you heal it starts from zero so yeah so does it is this seven plus four because of my my wisdom so he no no I, I i fixed it okay you can hover over the seven and see that you rolled a three a lot of formula there yeah okay. It's three plus eighteen minus ten divided by two, so it's three plus eight divided by two, three plus four. Now could, now could we all begin to move away from this guy now, or? Oh, absolutely. I can move a little bit down towards the. Yes, but you will take an attack here. of opportunity because you can't take the disengage action anymore. I don't want him to hit Korg again. Yeah, so if if he uh, he threatens every square around him, 
you know, every square that's touching him, he threatens. I'm, he threatens that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay there then, because I'm still at 19 hit points. So I'm oh, gonna stay there. Okay, so if if you leave his threatened area, he gets one free attack on you. He, then he will not. Okay. So I'm gonna stay there. So Korg can go. Yep. Now is he going to get a shot at Korg if he goes away? Uh, it depends. I mean, it, it depends because. I mean, it because it forced movement cannot provoke an attack of opportunity. So if one of you pulls Korg, then then no. Okay. All right. Then I'll stay. All right. Here we go. Let me see. All right. Sorry. You know, as of right yeah, now, yeah. you guys haven't actually murdered anyone just yet. Yeah. Okay, so let's I don't know. correct oh, that. That that they can that they <laughs> that they can prove that they can prove. So as Prince you were can saying, say anything I'm... he wants. Go Timbo. Can't hear anybody. Hey, Mitch, did you attack? Did you use your attack? I he I healed Korg and then I I stayed there. Oh, okay, you healed. Okay. Jimbo. What was his name? Did you guys lose me again? Yeah. Yeah, he went away for a minute. Apparently, Hamish about. wants Korg to live for some reason. Yeah. So I was gonna I was saying I was gonna grab him by the uh, shirt collar and pull him back. Yeah. Um, and I do also have uh, cure wounds, so I'm going to try and ca can I do it at the same time or not really? Uh, so the way that I have it is you can move as much as you want. You can grab him, but that's a standard action to like grab and pull someone, or you can uh, cast your your spell, but you can't you know, grab him and then cast your spell as you're doing so because you don't have the uh, finger dexterity to be able to do all the somatic components while you're grabbing someone. My fingers are pretty good. I don't know what you're telling me. But be that as it may. So I'm just going to grab him and pull him back then. Okay. Uh, so I'm not going to make you roll for it because I'm going to say that he comes along semi-willingly so you guys can get about here. Okay, and I'm going to sort of stay in the same location here to sort of cover him. Yeah. Big idiot. Yeah, no, it looks really funny because you are this, uh, you know, lithe elf, and Korg is this monstrous, beefy man, and so you're, like, trying to, like, stand in front of him, but it, it literally just looks like he's hiding behind a, a bean pole. All right, what's up, Dells? Uh, so did I hear you correctly? I can cast a regular spell and a cantrip spell? As long as one of them is a bonus action. You have to have actions okay. to, to cover it. So if you, if you, um, you know, want to cast, uh, healing word, I think is a, is a bonus action. You could also then cast a cantrip that round. Okay, but it will say, like, on the spell that it's, like, a bonus action type spell. Yes. All right, so I don't have any of this, so I'm just going to go with, um, um, I'm going to cast Magic Missile and hope this guy has uh, uh, enough hit points left where I can just take him out with that. We'll see. Bear with me here. Yeah, so uh, your missiles uh, fly through the air, um, striking the veteran for a total of 11 damage. He is extremely badly wounded, but still able to fight. And then I'll move. Good shot.
And which way did the orc say to go? To follow him down this alley over here. All right, these guards continue to guard uh, Prince Abizi. The veteran is so badly wounded that he decides his best bet is to disengage and back up by the guards. So I get a hit at him, then, don't I? No, because he disengaged. Okay. So if I'd have used that word before disengage, would I have been able to you, leave you, without getting you, hit? You need you need a standard action to be able to disengage. Okay. Yeah, because you healed, then you could okay. disengage. Right. One or the other. Because he's deciding not to attack you, he can move without being attacked. All right. All right. Kurug's like. My friends, come! They will pursue shortly when the reinforcements arrive. All right, let's go. Dun, 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 dun. Abizi says, "You fools! After them!" But they've got swords, you idiots! We've all <laughs> got swords. Can we all start moving? Yeah. Uh, so, um, yeah, if you guys are just, uh, you know, going to follow Korug and retreat at this point, then I will end combat. And this will also then be where we stop the session for this week. And we will pick up next session with what is Korug, you know, doing? Where is he leading you guys to? And what are you going to do from there? So, uh, you know, thank you very much for playing. And as always, everyone, good gaming. Thanks, Chad.